without question, the hardest thing to do is to start the process of investigating this information that challenges our belief system. That first step requires stepping over and above however many years of mind control that you've been subjected to. So if you start your process at 25 years, you have 25 years of undoing to undo. If you start five years after that, you have five more years of undoing to undo before you even start the process of investigating information. Because part of this mind control program is turning off the mechanisms that keep us from questioning our reality, that keep us from allowing this information to enter into our reality. And turning off those systems takes time, takes energy, takes focus, it takes a motivation. And part of the process of just being subjected to information as if it's the end all be all is that we are attacked on the levels of motivation, of drive, of even the confidence to think that we have the ability to think for ourselves. The way the system is set up is to train us to think that we don't need to think for ourselves. This is why when a friend asked me, genuinely asked me, you know, where, where do you get your inspiration? Where do you get your drive to start this process or continue this process of researching and sharing information? I started the response going into how important it was for me personally because of what me and my family has gone through. The part of my reality that involved being a part of that system when I went into the military, being in the public school system, having lost a family member to the shit that people have to deal with who live in the same situations that we do every day. My story isn't just my story. My story is our story. It's the larger family's story. And that story is every day being swept under the rug or distracted from. So once you start to turn one page of that book, 10 more pages reveal themselves. And it's an everlasting journey. It's something that you will never stop doing. See, the system, what it does is, and this is what I told my friend, the system presents itself as if it knows everything. It knows about the largest of the large. It, lo it knows about the smallest of the small. It knows everything about the universe, everything about atoms, everything about psychology, everything about medicine, everything about food, everything about music, everything about entertainment, everything in your world, according to that system, everything in your world, is accounted for. It's peaked out through the evolution program from the Big Bang. The mainstream system, Western so-called civilization, is the peak of intellectual glory. It's the peak of education. It's the peak of intelligence. It's the peak of humanity. This is what's being sold to us on a daily basis. And that alone cuts, completely cuts more than in half your desire to even challenge that system. It's so big, you can't even comprehend being able to hold that weight. And that's the thing. You don't have to hold that weight. It's impossible to hold that weight of the knowledge of everything in this whole reality. This is why they claim to know everything, yet when you investigate what they say they know, they know nothing. It's all based upon theories. They don't know anything, but they tell you and they put on that suit and tie and stand in front of you as if they do know everything. So when you look at that, you look at yourself and you say, well, I can't do that. How could I know everything? They have people, they have generations of people who have been doing this. And look, I'm comfortable. I have a job. I have a house. I have a car. I have a computer. I have a phone. I have everything that I need. I'm set. Why should I ask questions? Why should I rock the boat? Maybe I won't be comfortable with what I see. This is what's happening. When people get to that point, first of all, it's hard enough to even want to look into anything if you already have everything. That's why this system does that. It gives you, quote unquote, everything that you need. But throughout everybody's life, there's always something that's missing. 
that something that's missing is your engagement, conscious, spiritual, psychological, all of the above engagement in yourself, meaning your ability to trust yourself, your ability to challenge yourself, your ability to think for yourself. These abilities go dormant when you have a system that provides all the answers for you. So for people who have grown up with basically nothing, who've been struggling their entire lives, this is why it's easier for us to let go of that grasp on our reality that the system has. We don't have to let anything go. We're a step ahead of the game when we're going into this. We don't have that comfort that many people have to deal with in order to transcend. We don't have that. We're already uncomfortable. So we find comfort in the truth. We find comfort in investigating our reality. We find comfort in reconnecting with our culture, with our ancestors, with ourselves. See, people nowadays find comfort in something outside of themselves. Social media, prescription drugs, food, sex, all of the above addictions that are out there. That's what closes the gap between the individual and themselves. So once you let go of all that shit, once you let go of the grasp that that these addictions have on you, now you're opening up a deeper part of yourself. You're opening up space and you can fill that space with realizations, with truth, with connection, with reconnecting with yourself, reconnecting with letting things go. A lot of the reasons why we don't go into this information is because We can't let go. We can't let go of the anger. We can't let go of the fear. We can't let go of what we have, what we love. One of the hardest things to get into and start to realize was what happens when you start this research in reference to your connection with people who are close to you. See, people who are close to you are close to you based upon who you are in that moment. If you have family members who are close to you, nine times out of 10, they're not going to go on this journey with you. In fact, They're going to be the ones who are going to be adamantly against you making that move because that move is going to separate you in many different ways from those people who are close to you because most people are not equipped, ready, in line, in their entire lives to make that move. Like I said, the older you get, the harder it is. So if you have parents who haven't even opened up to this information, who make their whole reality, who pride themselves in anti-information, anti-research, in investing themselves in the system. The system, the part of themselves who is the system, is the most prideful part of them. They can't let that go. They're most proud of that part of themselves who is knowledgeable of that system, who is a part of that system, who has made whatever they made from that system. They're layers and layers and layers years and years and years separated from making that move. So when you make that move, what tends to happen is that the people who are not moving, who are going to remain comfortable and staying stagnant, those people, when they start to feel a certain way about you making your move, they will attack you in many different ways. Largely, it'll be passive aggressively. But once you start really stepping out into yourself, it will go from passive aggressive to aggressive. And many times people will just shut you out completely. You will have to develop a different kind of relationship with them. Or not at all. It depends on the situation. Point being, every part of your life that you love and hold near and dear to you is going to be challenged. And if you're looking to go into this information, into this part of yourself, that's something that you're going to have to deal with at one time or another. And more often than not, you're going to have to deal with it for the rest of your life. Another part of this that you're going to have to deal with is being on your own in many different ways, but more so than what we used to be. Because there's so much camaraderie in the system of mind control. That's part of it. We connect, we unify around all of these controls, the football, the basketball, the baseball, the movies, the music, the politics, all of these systems are the glue that hold us together in many different ways. When you get into family gatherings on holidays, what do the the people talk about? All of these things are a part of our lives to a depth that largely we're even unaware of, of ourselves. So these are all things that we have to deal with 
that we're presented with once we start this journey. And that's after the fact of even starting. But with this video, I wanted to focus more on the motivation, the inspiration that helps continue on this path, whatever that path is. So the main thing I focused on when my friend asked me this question was what happens when you start this process? You start asking the question. And that was the main thing that I shared with my friend was you'll never have enough questions to ask in your entire lifetime. There are too many questions out there. In fact, the questions get more complex over time. Some questions are based in that mind control. So some questions do disappear. Some questions eventually do make sense. But the questioning, the mechanism of questioning never stops. It continues on and you have to make amends with that. You have to come. It's, a, it's an ego test. You'll never know everything that you need to know. In fact, there's nothing that you need to know to any kind of level. Breaking through that activates a part of you that changes who you are. It changes how you interact, how you research. And that's a change that a lot of people are afraid of because, like I said, people are super comfortable. So starting the process of research involves letting go, mostly. And that's the main thing I was emphasizing when I was breaking this all down, was that, first of all, humble yourself to know that you already know nothing and you will continue to know nothing. But the main part of this process is to undo the some things that are nothing veiled in the identity of being something. These some things that are nothing, that are forced into your reality as something, they're nothing. They're less than nothing because they are based upon illusions. So what does that involve? What do you mean when you say something is nothing or <laughs> nothing's become something because a system told us that this is what it is? No, it's not. So once again, where do you start? What do you, what do, you do? How, how does this work? How I did it when I started this process, because I started this largely on YouTube, in a sense, consciously started to transition because I was holding myself accountable for the information I was sharing. I can't share information with people if it's just loose, if I didn't research, if I didn't, you know, I have to have a sense of self, a sense of confidence in this information, in these perspectives, in order to share it with people. If I didn't do that, then I wouldn't allow myself to share anything. I wouldn't allow myself to accept that as my reality. So letting go of that feeling of, well, I already know what I need to know was the first step. Because what is it that I think that I know? Where did this information come from? See, I started this process before YouTube. We'll say YouTube started in like 2012. In 2010 into 11, that's when I actually started breaking down parts of myself. I was out of the army. I was out of the university system and I jumped straight into the Occupy movement and that set something off. Who are you protesting? What are you talking about? What are you yelling at? What information is important enough to be out here on the street potentially being thrown in jail for? And even worse, where is this information going? Where are these people going? Who are the people around me? What are they talking about? What are their goals? What are their perspectives? What do they think is wrong with this system? What do I think is wrong with this system? What are my goals after this system? Let's say this system gets held accountable completely, and then now what? That's the whole thing. Starting there, now what? And that's when I realized that there's more work that needed to be done internally than externally. And those protests, those movements are 100% external and 100% involved in people asking something of the system. I didn't want anything from this system. I still don't because this system is designed to suck the life out of you. If they give you anything, it's only to maintain the system overall. Whatever they give you, it's to maintain the, the other systems that make up the entire system, which is you giving your power away to them. To it. So coming into that space, I was instantly attracted to the new age because they pawn off this 
personality of being about the self, being about inner work. And it's true, they do work in that realm. But is that the answer? No. Because you still have all these other questions that are out there. What about the system? What about me? What about my family? What about the land? What about this mind control program? What about the complexities of this system getting more complex over time? What is my involvement in exposing this information? Because this is not something that everybody needs to do, but since part of my art, my artistic ability is to share and distribute and convert information into something that could be seen as an image or heard as a story or felt as an experience, since that's part of what I do, that's when I started to realize, well, you know, where do you fit here? What are you going to do? Is this a part of what you want to do? And yes, completely. So getting into that space got me prepared, but it also made me see communities, groups of people from perspectives that were very helpful. I was prepared when I went into the New Age community for the mind controls that were in that community because I still had those connections to family, to culture, to history, to the ancestors. It was still there. It was just dormant. It just wasn't activated. So when things that were presented to me in those communities started to challenge and make those deeply anchored connections feel a certain way, that's when I started to see a deeper perspective of these communities and a deeper perspective of myself. You know, who are you? What do you really represent? And you see in these new age communities, what gets represented is more theory. The theory of the alien brethren, extraterrestrial ancestors or future people that were connected to these star systems that are involving all this other stuff. This is all externalization. Once again, making the story bigger than it is in order to distract people from the work that needs to be done internally. Creating an artificial internal breakthrough through emphasizing these connections to the Pleiades or the Arcturian or the Andromedans or whoever, whatever it is that's out there. It's another story for people to be attached to. So I knew, I was like, well, how the fuck are we going to jump into the space and planets and stars and other galaxies and all this other shit if we haven't even done what needs to be done here? We haven't even done the real internal work. And when I started to bring that work to the surface, people who are in those worlds felt a certain way about it. They felt like vulnerable enough to attack me for doing that work as if it didn't matter. And that's when I was like, okay, well, if you are, if that's part of your journey to attack me, then I don't need to be around you. And if this is something that's going on in your community, then I don't need to be around that community. So peace out. And I'll just leave it at that and let the community expose itself to me by just being outside of it now. And sure enough, that's what exactly what was happening. You started to see how the New Age was connected to the mainstream systems. See how these communities are still wanting the power of that system to have control over them. Wanting that system to do something for them. And so many other things that are connected to that relationship, but ultimately exposing the lack of power, the lack of real opening up of themselves. It was still based upon illusions. So here's another group of people that I had to separate myself from because I wasn't allowed to be all of me. I wasn't allowed to go as far as I needed to go in reference to where I was seeing where I was going and where I was seeing where people around me, especially, like I've said in previous videos, focusing my energy on the heaviest bleeds, people who are bleeding the most, people who are having the hardest time breathing. Focus your energy on that because that's where people will receive you more and you will also be able to invest your energy in something that is more relevant to this moment. Investing my energy in, in for more theories, more waiting games, is just another mind control. But knowing that 
people from where I grew up are still dealing with the, the same old shit system, still dealing with the government putting drugs and guns into the community, fucked up food into the community, broken education into the community, gentrifying our communities constantly. There's an orchestrated attack against a certain demographic of people. And only now is it starting to affect other people. It's starting to leak into the suburbs, leak into the middle class. And now those people are starting to get hit and those people are used to being in control of the narrative and what's being exposed on a larger scale. So when they get involved in this process, they think they're in charge. So what do they do when they're in charge and they see energy going somewhere else? They want to take away from that and focus the attention back on them. This is why our journey, our work is demonized. And they say, stop talking about racism. Stop talking about the system like that. We're all being attacked. We're all, it's not to, nothing to do about race. We're all under this government. We're all, see, that's the part of the transition. That's the part of the work that needs to be done that those people are avoiding because it's deep within them. They have to find a deep, deep, deep anchor in order to anchor themselves to get out of there. But people don't want to do that work because it's too difficult. It's too vulnerable to go there. So it's easier to project onto somebody else and tell them, you're wrong. You're wrong. Don't talk about that. Don't do that because it makes me feel bad. It's like, well, that's your problem. Get away from me and my sphere of work and do your own work with your own group of people if that's what you feel. Because you are working against this progress over here. In your own way, it's not really affecting us. But on a large scale, if people like that were to get large platforms, which they do, because that is a tool, a mechanism to keep us from going any deeper, when they get those platforms, they focus on information that is comfortable for them. They focus on the information that keeps our information from getting any bigger. And they're paid to do this. This is what YouTube and social media is all about. This is why it's put out there because they can pay people to focus other people's attention on the information that they need them to focus on in order to push the agendas even further. Let me say that again. Social media, influencers, the mainstream, they focus their attention on information that is counterproductive to the real process, the real work that needs to be done. And in order to maintain that focus, they pay people and elevate people through these social media platforms in order to maintain the focus and the distraction of millions and even billions of people. And in that same process, people who are using these platforms, who are sharing information that threatens those mind controls, they will have a negative response from that system. So instead of getting paid more to share information, we are getting money taking away from us and time taking away from us and the work that we're doing. So we're being censored. We're not allowed to be monetized. We're shut off when you get strikes on your channel. You can't upload for two weeks. This is what just happened to me. So you're losing time. You're losing it. If these videos were monetized, it would have a direct impact, but I don't monetize any of these videos. So it really doesn't matter to me. But the process of the work is still affected. I would have been producing more if I had the opportunity to share that information. But I focus my energy on other stuff when stuff like that happens, which is fine. I'll work with it. But overall, you can see what happens is that the information itself does get affected. There is a slowing down on one group of people and a speeding up of information and other things, resources with other groups of people. So this is how that system can maintain control over the information and the people themselves. This is another thing that you have to come to terms with once you start to take a few steps on this journey, if you're going to step out there and start to share this information. But also, it is a deterrent for people. 
people won't even go into that process if there's so many stop signs there's so many dead ends in the way and you just kind of have to barrel through them go over there turn around go to another street whatever it is do what you have to do but keep going and that's the second hardest process after the first thing which is starting the process which is the hardest part because you are asking yourself to see a different part of yourself to change after you start that journey the next process is to continue through all of the stop signs through all the dead ends to keep going after you get through that you start to realize that that is part of the system it's just a collection of stop signs and dead ends and you get that information and then you move on to the next one and then you keep going and then once you start to investigate everything that's in and around you on a, on a plane level, on a even keel level, then you start to have a higher perspective and you can see more of a bird's eye view perspective of what's going on. And that's when you can shift into another velocity. You can start to go into different places. You can start to go into your dreams. You can start to go into psychedelic journeys, psychedelic information, and all the information connected outside of that realm. And this is all work that needs to be done that a lot of people are not going to want to do because it's who the hell wants to do homework? Who wants to do that stuff? This is the homework. It's the only homework you've ever had. It's the best homework you've ever had. And once you start that process, you'll want to do more. It'll become who you are. But once you get to that level, that kind of third level of sh transition, shifting, once you get there, you're a different person now. You interact with people, you think differently, you research differently, you observe your reality differently. Everything about you becomes fresh, new, real, realer than you've ever been. Because the, the part of you that is you comes from you. It doesn't come from the education system. It doesn't come from your car. It doesn't come from your, your successful job. It doesn't come from your degree. It doesn't come from the system. It doesn't come from anything involving that world. It comes from you. And you're okay with not knowing everything that you think needs to be known about this realm. See, this system wants to tell you it knows everything about this realm because that maintains the power it has over the people. But you don't need to know. There is no knowing of every single thing that is going on. There's only a constant investigation, a constant unveiling of deeper parts of yourself. And once you start that work, you'll start to realize that there's no other work to do. Now that you've gotten the ball rolling, a sense of responsibility comes to you. You are now the education system. You're now in charge of understanding the relationships that we have the natural relationships here, the sun, the moon, the stars, nature, the earth, the man, the woman, the child, the elder, the ancestors. All of these connections have a meaning. They have a purpose. And it can take lifetimes to even start to figure out what's going on in those relationships. And that's where that drive, that's where the desire comes from for me. It's because each time I go, each time I open myself up to realizing a deeper part of myself and a deeper part of this storyline overall, something else presents itself. Somebody else gets inspiration. And the ultimate drive, like I said, comes from the responsibility once you get into this journey to the next seven generations, to yourself, to your ancestors, to your friends and family that are alive right now. There's a responsibility that comes with this information. And on top of that, not many people are doing this work. Not many people are going to allow themselves to do this work. But somebody needs to do it. And eventually it comes to a point to where it's not something that you're doing. It's something that you are. In the beginning, it feels like something you're doing. Like when I was sharing my journey on YouTube, it was like, a, oh, I need to do this. I need to make another video. I need to research another thing. I need to find out what this means. I need to find out how this is connected to this thing and then I'll share it with people. Those are things that I was doing. But after all of those things started to connect to other things, there's less things to do. 
because you see from a higher perspective and you'll see that most of that stuff is just busy work. You don't need to do it anyway. In the beginning, you need to do it to undo it. That's the thing. You have to read that book to realize why you don't need to know what's in that book. That work needs to be done. It's not a waste of time. It's adding to the next book that you read, the next step that you take. Some of those books that you don't need to read need to be read because you need to help other people realize that they don't need to read those books. (laughs) There's some people that are going to stumble all the way down the road so other people don't have to do that. And this is what we're seeing right now with people starting to break out of these systems. Somebody needs to make that first step. And when you see that that first step is being made by other people, it inspires you to do it. This is what inspires me. This is part of that drive I was explaining earlier. There are teachers that have been sharing this information for years, decades, generations, ancestors telling these stories forever. And there's an attack on that information. There's an attack on those people who do that work. That's a motivation enough for me to say, okay, well, if that's the case, then this must be a threat. Let me do this work. This is my job now. I'll stand here because they don't have the ability to stand here right now. And then when I'm done, somebody else will do the same for me. But the work needs to be done. And something turns on inside of you that you don't really turn on. You're not, your hands are not on it to turn that thing on. It turns on naturally and you become a different person. You let go of that world. So in closing, I'll leave it on this, which was the main point that I shared with my friend in reference to the motivation and the drive to do this work. Every part of your reality has been prepackaged for you. From childhood to adolescence to your adulthood, even into your becoming an elder. So in many cases, your entire lives are packaged and delivered to you from birth to death. And what's involved in those packages are generations of mind control and belief systems that have nothing to do with reality in many different cases. And that work, that stuff needs to be undone. It needs to be removed from your life, removed from your thought process, removed from your reality. And you have to question every single thing that you have been presented with by this system. How you see the universe, how you see nature, how you see yourself, how you see the sun, the moon, the stars, how you see life, how you see death. Everything that the education system told you to see reality as needs to be questioned. So this is what I told my friend. Find out everything, the most heaviest belief systems that you have, the biggest things that put together your world, find them and make it your responsibility to investigate the deepest parts of those belief systems and debunk them. Ask yourself what they told you about the universe, what they told you about Earth, what they told you about yourself. What they told you about your relationship with the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything else. Everything that they've told you. Is it true? Is it based in truth? And like I told my friend, each time I went into answering those questions for myself, every single time I realized that they were full of shit from start to finish. And once that happens, once you start to unveil that work, You become a different person. And that way of seeing the world becomes part of who you are. But it's you that has to first trigger it. You have to start to let go. Like I said, in order to investigate, in order to debunk that information, you have to at first let go of the information, the grasp that that information has on you. You can't let go of it if you don't realize that it has a grasp on you. So you have to let go of the grasp it has on you by letting go of the the belief systems that you have that come from those systems. So that's the first step. And that's, like I said, it's the hardest thing because those beliefs make up who you think you are. Because that's what they told you to think. Then once you let that go, now you open this door to, okay, well, 
if the universe isn't what they told me it is, then what is it? Okay, well, what did my ancestors say? Boom. Here, that takes a whole year, two, three, four, five years, an entire lifetime to see what your ancestors were talking about when they were envisioning or thinking about what the universe is. You have to want to do that. If you don't want to do that work, it's going to affect other parts of your reality. So if you do that and you open up that book, it's going to open up access to another chapter of your reality, another chapter of yourself. And then when you do that, now you got two books, two chapters on the shelf. Now that opens up exponentially four other things that you have to go into. And then continue on down the line, exponentially opening up, opening up, opening up, opening up, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. Before you know it, you're 300 pounds lighter. You're 800 pounds smarter. You're 1,000 pounds more equipped. And you have a motivation and a drive to do what it is that you want to do, that you need to do, that you didn't even know was there. You become a different person. And that journey never stops. And once you start doing that for a while, that's when you start to realize, okay, well, there's a meaning here. There's a purpose here. I don't know what it is. I might never know what it is. And I'm okay with that. But this work needs to be done. I know that for sure. And whether it makes sense now or later or not at all is of no never mind. Because I make sense right now. I'm starting to make sense to myself. And other people are seeing that I make sense. They're seeing that they make sense. And we're starting to see that we make sense. And in that realization of ourselves, we're also realizing that this system makes no sense. It makes anti-sense. And that system is dying. Because it's dying from the inside of people. They're letting it go. And whether it's now or three lifetimes, 10 lifetimes, whatever it is down the road that something actually starts to change in reference to letting go of that broken system that feeds off of our energy, doesn't matter. Sooner the better. I would like this to change sooner than later, but it has to change on its own, in its own natural time. And this is another process that is a part of this shifting, the letting go of expectations. The letting go of the desire, the attachment to this work, to these systems. This is another part of it. And once you let that go, once again, another part of you opens up. 